Hey, Mama, wouldn't you like to pause from your busy day and listen in to experts and homeschool parents like you about the beautiful world of homeschooling? This new podcast is designed for you. Each episode connects you to the best conversations that will give you courage and fill your cup so you can keep pouring into your family every single day. Introducing the Hey Mama Homeschool Show, brought to you by The Old School House, your trusted homeschool partner for over 20 years. Hello, this is Deborah Wooler, Senior Editor of The Old School House Magazine, the premier trade magazine for homeschool families for 20 years now. Uh, I have eight children. Uh, They've all been educated at home from birth. And uh, we have graduated seven of them already, and I have one in high school left. And uh, I'm also a grandma to a three-year-old. Actually, he's almost four now. Um, And so we are sort of starting over again with this little guy. And it's been quite the beautiful process of homeschooling all of these children and allowing um, God to take the reins and show us how to actually do this. Here we are starting this new podcast. And the vision we have for this is that we wanted to connect homeschoolers where they're at uh, with ideas and resources and other speakers and, and just inspiration to help in the daily life of a homeschool family. So what we're going to do with this podcast is we're going to tackle a new theme each week that is very relatable to homeschooling uh, from anything from what to do when math brings tears and how many of you know math brings tears to some of our kids um, to how to handle exhaustion and depression to what to do about high school. um, What about balancing all the things we have to do? Maybe we work at home and we're homeschooling. How do we get it all done? So this podcast, uh, the episodes are going to follow along the same themes each week as our weekly e-newsletter that is called the Homeschool Minute. Now, if you're not already on that mailing list, uh, do go to thehomeschoolminute.com and get signed up there because whatever we're talking about on our podcast here, uh, our writers are also going to be writing about every Wednesday an email will come into your uh, inbox called the Homeschool Minute. And we have authors that you love. We have Todd Wilson. We have Helen Melanie Young. We have so many others in the homeschool community that write for us. And we take a new theme each week. And we discuss that theme each from our own uh, point of view. And they oftentimes are different. So that is good to hear different points of view. And so on the podcast, we will follow along with those themes. So we'll have the podcast on Mondays and then The Homeschool Minute will come into your inbox on Wednesdays, and you'll hear from other people on the same uh, topic. So there are four of us on staff who are going to be facilitating these podcasts each week, Um, and this week it's my turn to host. Uh, And the theme that we are going to be talking about this week is called When Math Brings Tears, and (laughs) how many of us? have had children that have had actual tears over math. Uh, I know I have. Over the years, uh, probably every one of my children (laughs) has had a moment of tears. And so have I. So (laughs) let's talk about that. We want to talk about when math brings tears. Um, The first thing, the very first thing I would say to you, and I've been homeschooling now for I say 31 years because my oldest is 31 and I count homeschooling from the time a child is born (laughs) until the time they, you know, leave the nest of your family. And so I have been homeschooling for 31 years. And in those years, yes, I've had um, a lots of tears on um, the math side, but also my own tears. And what I have found in those years is the very first thing I need to do is just stop and pray. And I know that sounds so elementary, but, uh, and like, of course, but in the moment, if you really do stop and pray, then the Lord often 
gives you the wisdom you need for that moment, for that child, because there's a plethora of reasons why that child is in tears. It could be that they didn't sleep well that night. It could be that they, you know, their blood sugar is off. It could be that they're just not getting this concept. It could be that they just need to press through something hard and they need training. So there's so many reasons. So that is why we need to stop and pray and ask God to show us what is it that we need to do with this child right now? Because he is our guidance counselor, right? God shows us uh, what to do with these children because he knows their future. He also knows if they're going to need math in their future and if they're going to need higher math or if they're just going to need, you know, the basic understanding of math in order to live in this world. And so because he has that wisdom and that knowledge that we don't have, we need to hold tight to him and trust him to give us the answer that we need. So um, unfortunately, I will tell you that in my homeschooling, I have almost killed, uh, you know, the love of learning uh, math in my, in my kids when they were younger and I was just starting out, um, I can definitely relate to uh, kids hating math and having tears. I remember this one time, I was so excited this one day because uh, boxes had come in the mail and I knew it was new curriculum and I was excited, but, but so my little ones were excited. And so we all opened this box together and they saw that it was a new curriculum and the math books were right on top. <laughs> and these were um, my, my two oldest boys. And so they were young at the time. I don't know. I think they were maybe 10 and eight or so. And all of a sudden they burst into tears <laughs> and ran to their room. <laughs> I just thought, I was so excited. What's going on? They are running away in tears because their new math books came. Well, up until that point, I was actually, you know, like a math dictator. I was like, I was like a homeschool um, prison guard or something. I was like, you will do everything in these books, every question, you know, every day. And because they didn't know any better. But as as time went on, and I'm just telling you from my many years of experience, that children don't have to do every problem in every book, and you don't have to be that math dictator that uh, kills it for them like I was. Uh, so I had been far from encouraging. I was more get it done. Um, and then I would become, have, has this happened to you where you become frustrated because you have to re-explain every problem and they're not getting it and you're every single day you're re-explaining the same thing you just explained the day before and you're wondering why is this not sticking you know for some of this this is just normal developmental issues for children they just need repetition and they need to some of them need to hear you say it more than once and so you know you can let that frustration go and and just <laughs> ask the lord to show you how to re-explain again in um you know, a better fashion. Um, so here I was a hard taskmaster and I made them do every problem on every page and didn't faze me that there were tears in their eyes <laughs> until my bright math student began to hate math um, because this was um, my oldest daughter. She actually got it without having to do all the repetitious problems but I made her do them anyway. And so I saw my very bright math students start to hate math. And um, it was, you know, not a good thing. And I thought, Lord, I'm doing this all wrong. I need your help. I need you to show me a better way. <laughs> uh, so I was killing my kids, you know, love for learning. And, you know, math sometimes can do that. And we need to ask the Lord for wisdom and how to rethink it. Um, so uh, as I prayed and asked the Lord um, to how to rethink it, he showed me so many areas of uh, ways we could do math differently. I could put my struggler in math um, through uh, the more manipulative type um, math programs where it, that one could touch and feel and work with their hands with math. And then 
uh, my more auditory child, I was able to understand that they needed to hear someone explain every problem to them out loud where I was a busy mom and couldn't do it. So um, the Lord showed me some curriculum that was on DVD or online and that had a tutor that would explain every problem to them. Um, And then I also was able to um, rethink my one son's learning uh, style where he could not keep up with uh, a spiral type math learning. Spiral math learning is where you learn a new concept every day almost. And then they also bring in all the old concepts in the problem set. And so for that child, it was um, they could do, you know, they could almost do some of the old problem set, but bringing in a new concept so often um, was really difficult for them. And so I learned with that child to do more of a developmental, sequential type math where they were just learning one concept, not bringing in the spiral learning of all the other concepts. Just, okay, we are going to learn fractions until we know fractions right and left. We're not going to bring in anything else, right? And then move on to the next concept. And there's there's math curriculum for all, all of those kinds of learning. So when you understand how God created your child uniquely, he um, uh, homeschooling is so amazing now that there is uh, a math curriculum for every kind of learner you have. So again, there's the hands-on kinds of math that have all the manipulatives for your um, more sensory child, your more hands-on child. There's the auditory math that will explain everything to your child. Uh, And then there's also the developmental type of math where your child needs to only go through one concept at a time. And I know there's all kinds of math curriculum out there. And um, here's the good news about um, anything you teach your child in any fashion, you know, that one time is on your side. And so if you're get, if you've gotten it wrong up to this point, it's okay because time is on your side and you can just start again with something new that is more geared towards your child and they're not going to suffer. The second thing is the statistics prove out that no matter what curriculum you use, your homeschool child is going to be points <laughs> ahead above your um, their peers in the public school. And so it, it doesn't really matter how much money you spend or how little money you spend, you know, just pray for the wisdom of God and, and he rewards those who um, honor him with the raising of their children. And so, you know, if math is part of that education for our children, God is going to bless us in that. And he's going to help us through that. I mean, I have eight, eight children that are all unique, all completely unique, all learn in, in, (laughs) in unique fashion. And so every child, um, I had to pray and ask God, uh, how he made them so that I could see, Lord, show me, show me who they are, that you've, how you've created them so that I can best um, help them along in the learning of whatever it was. Here we're talking about math. Um, so did any of my children enjoy math um, <laughs> at, you know, by the end of this? Yes. Many of them uh, ended up enjoying math. Um, Several of them are not even, um, since they're all, seven of them are graduated, I can see, you know, where they're, <laughs> you know, they're headed in life. Many of them did not actually need like higher math in as far as like calculus or trigonometry. Um, and then um, some of them just needed, you know, the basics of understanding math for life. And uh, so, Whatever you're going to be doing, you know, say you only go up through algebra in your high school and because God has shown you, you know, the direction of this child is probably not headed into engineering or science or, you know, accounting or some kind of math degree, um, that that's okay. And whatever they have not learned in your homeschool and, and they can certainly pick up in college if they are going the college route, you will just be preparing them for the best. A college experience that they're going to have with the math that you give them. So uh, the good news is 
they will be fine. <laughs> and you can change midstream, whatever you're working on. Um, so what I would suggest, some things that helped me um, was in the elementary, um, well, preschool, you know, of course, you're just going to be learning um, just counting, right? Preschool is counting and learning shapes and that those kinds of math concepts. So that's that's easy. They just learn that in play. They learn that in watching you. They learn that in engaging with you as you, um, you know, make their snacks and you putting raisins on their little celery and peanut butter and you're counting it with them. And, um, you know, you're using cookie cutters of different shapes to cut out their sandwiches. I mean, it's just life learning. And then in kindergarten, you're going to be giving them, you know, things to count, such as, uh, you know, beans or counting bears or, you know, whatever. If they've got 10 stuffed animals, you're going to be using that. Um, you know, you really don't have to have um, some expensive curriculum for these younger years. It's just real life learning that they can learn just with you. You've got, you know, 100 books on your bookshelf and you can go, you can say, look, here's here are um, groups of 10. There's groups of 10 books here, a group of 10 books here. Look, 10 groups of 10 is going to be 100 books. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but over the years, I have way more than 100 books on my bookshelf. You may not, and that's okay. I'm sure there is something in your home that you can count and make um, groups of things, you know, whether it's popsicle sticks or some kind of craft supply that you have. So in the elementary years, they're going to be learning, um, you know, they may be starting some kind of workbooks in math at that time, um, but you're also still going to be doing real life skills with them, and they're going to be learning how to put to use the math that they're doing in their work workbooks. You know, they may be doubling a recipe with you, or they may be, um, you may be showing them how to like... Uh, see what an ounce is or what a cup is or what a pint is, you know, in real life, you're going to maybe pour some quartz into a gallon and um, just showing them in real life what things look like. And, um, you know, filling a cup with eight ounces and then um, filling a pint with the two cups and all of those things that you can do in real life as they also do their um, workbooks and um, not everyone, not every homeschool family uses math workbooks. There's um, unschooled <laughs> unschoolers who, who don't use the workbook. And you have from that end of the spectrum of unschoolers to the other e end of the spectrum to, say, classical, uh, classically educated children um, uh, or more structured, um, textbook-driven um, homeschoolers. And, and it, that works for their family. And across the board, your children are going to learn because God created them to learn. And if they're having a difficulty, he's going to show you that. And he's going to show you how to overcome those difficulties, one child at a time, <laughs> one day at a time, and praying through those days that you have with them. Um, and then, you know, junior high and high school, um, they are going to be, uh, again, preparing for higher math. And this is when um, in the elementary years, you're going to want to make sure that they have all of their facts, their basic math facts down and memorized so that when they get to start doing some other higher math in the junior high years and the high school years, they're not going to struggle with those basic math facts. And they're going to be well on their way to just moving forward. Um, and so they, um, in high school and junior high, they, they can start working with you on even your own budgeting of your own family um, money and income. You can, and th they can learn about income and expenses. And maybe you can even have them, you know, write out your um, checks uh, to your mission organizations or whatever, you know, whatever the Lord shows you to do with that child that's in, the, you know, at that stage to learn real life skills and how to be on their own independently um, in, in the area of math. And so they can, of course, you know, um, it, 
and budget, they can learn to budget and you could give them a maybe even a food budget and say, okay, this is the food budget for the week. I want you to um, plan meals according to this food budget and you're going to help us go shopping and, and pick out what we can with this amount of money that will feed our family for this week. There's a lot of real life skills we can do with the older kids as well. And um, definitely make sure they know that uh, when we're talking about money, that all it all belongs to God. It's all his and he allows us. Uh, he gives us generously what we have and we want to make sure we honor him with that. And I know you'll be teaching your kids, you know, the tithing and giving and saving and, and all of those things. So those are important skills before they leave your home. And consumer math, you know, maybe the, maybe you have a child who's not going to be an engineer or a scientist or an accountant, but they um, could learn a lot from just consumer math. And so the Lord will show you which direction to go with your child when they get to that age and stage. So you can ease up on being the math dictator in your home. Add a little fun and variety to your math. Um, no one, there's nothing that says you have to um, have uh, the subject of math every single day or workbook every single day or their math lesson, you know, five days a week. You could take a day off, you know, every other week or so. And maybe every other Friday you take off. Maybe you don't do math on a certain day of the week because you're busy with other co-ops and things. And so... This is where um, you are uh, have the freedom to uh, direct the education of your children, and you have time on your side, and and you can uh, decide to only do the even or odd problems for this particular child, or or you can choose not to do math on a certain day. Um, you could choose to do three lessons of math on Monday, and that's all you do on Monday is math, <laughs> and you don't do it the rest of the week. You know, it's really up to you and how you want, want to um, move your child along, and we're not looking for perfection per se, but we are looking for progress, and you will see progress as you, as you move along in math. Um, and so some of the things that I learned as I was going along is, um, to make sure that if my child needed their math graded, um, that either they did the grading themselves, you know, when they were done with the lesson, they went back and graded it and then fixed what was wrong um, or relearned the concept that they were getting wrong. And instead of just going through, like I, <laughs> I had a, a period of time, you know, with eight kids at home, you, you kind of can lose track of things. And so there was some kids whose math didn't get graded in time. And, and so all of a sudden, they're learning a concept and doing it the wrong way for like, you know, three months, <laughs> and then you have to undo and relearn certain things. There was a couple of my kids who just weren't getting it. And we had to just sort of get them back to uh, a place in there math book where they were successful and start there again. Uh, and that's okay. Again, time is on your side and God will help you understand where your child is at and where they need to be. And it's okay to move back and start where they were successful and start over again, because maybe developmentally they weren't ready and it wasn't clicking for them. And then maybe the second time around, it's going to make more sense and you can, um, and they may actually take hold of it and be able to um, progress past that. Uh, so we um, did a lot of different things in our, our family. My husband loved to do things like have timed tests for them <laughs> as, as far as like multiplication tables. He would, he would make sure that they knew, knew their facts. He's an engineer. So he wanted to make sure that they knew their facts. And so he would have timed tests with them and he would do it with them. And they would all have to um, sit down and write out a whole multiplication table from one to 10. And whoever was done first got, uh, you know, I, I don't remember what he gave out. He, he loves ice cream, so I'm sure it was a scoop of ice cream or it was a dollar or something where he had a little reward for whoever got done first creating their um, a times table chart. 
and <laughs> their multiplication table, and um, or wrap ups. If you've heard of those, they're manipulatives where you take um, it's a it's a piece of plastic and it has a string on it, and then there's a math problem on one side, and then there's a, a list of answers on the other, and you move the string over to where the correct answer is to that problem, and you keep moving that string around. Um, and my husband would time the kids, and he would do it as well. And on all of those wrap-ups is what they're called, and they were fun. Another thing we used for that kind of, you know, getting your math facts mastered was something called calculators, and that was um, helpful in. Also, we would, you know, time those sheets. They they are timed sheets of math problems, and it's just one concept over and over, and it really gives them that um, that solid foundation for math that helped that. Another thing we found that helped with math um, was actually music instruction. Music instruction can actually help the brain um, process math concepts, <laughs> and so. So, you know, I didn't know that. And so those kids that were struggling with math, once we got them in music instruction, it really, you know, sort of clicked in some sort of developmental way in their brain that um, they could now do a little bit better in math. So, you know, God gives wisdom that we don't have. And um, again, maybe the tears are coming because your child is having to do something that they don't like because it takes them too long to do it and it's hard, you know. And so that may be a character issue that you need to work on with your child and talk to them about, you know, being excellent in all we do because we are representing Christ and who he is. And, you know, it may be that um, it's, you know, something that you can help them with. Maybe they need you know, snack while they're doing that. Um, on winter days, I remember you know, seeing my kids sitting around the table and they were allowed to have um, hot tea or hot chocolate and marshmallows <laughs> during, only during math. And so they looked forward to math because they could actually, um, um, what do you call it, roast their marshmallows, their little mini marshmallows. They could roast them over a little candle in front of them. <laughs> and so I was sitting there, you know, it was safe. I was watching. Uh, but it's something to look forward to, you know, a special thing while they're doing their math and only while doing their math could they do that. And so, um, you know, just different tips and tricks the Lord will show you because he created them. He knows their um, makeup. He knows their brain processing. He knows all about them. He knows what will help help them. And, you know, the, these are also discipleship times where if it is still just continually hard instead of you just becoming frustrated and them just ending up in tears it's where you're coming together and you're praying together and you're showing your child through this praying together um, and asking for God's help and asking for his wisdom you're showing them your relationship with your father and you're showing them who to turn to when they need help in hard things and so can math be discipleship absolutely because this is where the rubber hits the road. They're having a difficult time. You're going to pray together. You're going to say, Lord, give us wisdom. We need you. And the Lord is faithful to give wisdom. And James says he gives wisdom liberally to all who ask him. So uh, thank you for, for hanging with me and talking about math today um, and this new podcast venture we're doing. I'm really excited about. Uh, we have upcoming episodes. Uh, that you can stay tuned for on the Hey Mama Homeschool Show. We are going to be talking about what is a homeschool dad's role? How important is that? Um, and we're going to talk about non-readers and non-writers, what to do with those. Super, you're not going to want to miss that one. Um, and we're going to be talking about surviving winter depression. <laughs> so many um, very... Uh, insightful and practical topics for you in your homeschooling life. So stay tuned for those episodes coming up. And also look at the show notes because you will see in the show notes of this episode um, more things about math, a, a lot of um, articles from the magazine, from experts on math and how to help your child in math. You will see um, 
uh, other products and resources about math. And, and you also our schoolhouseteachers.com, which is our curriculum side of the old schoolhouse. We have uh, new math courses coming all the time right now. Um, we have intro to calculus um, and just so many different math courses that are available through schoolhouseteachers.com. So check the show notes. And thank you for staying with us today on this episode of the Hey Mama Homeschool Show. And I would just like to pray us out. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for your design of our children. And thank you for the children you've given us. And we want to steward them well for you. So give us wisdom, God. Give us wisdom each day. Even in math, (laughs) you have created a order in your creation and all the stars are numbered by you you uh, think math is important and we we want to make that important to our children as well so give us wisdom god and we thank you that you will and thank you for each homeschool family here today in jesus name amen 